Well, no, my friends, I'm Rick, and this is your seat at the table. And, you know, not how long ago in one or two of my videos, and in the comment sections thereof, I did make a comment that I did purchase uh, the TRO of Jihad Sourcebook. This is a new sourcebook for me. It's made by Catalyst. It's not something uh, I, I, once again, I emphasize a lot. Money is always an issue with me, and uh, I'm always paranoid about it. Uh, <laughs> Always one, we're always one check away from uh, having a problem. So when I saw this uh, on Catalyst website, I needed to make damn sure it was something I didn't own and uh, and it was worth investing money in. And so I went and did some uh, research. I looked at some t uh, some other uh, web or BattleTech uh, YouTube sites uh, that did do some reviews on it, and I looked at the Sarno WikiNet uh, take on it, and etc. And determined that this is indeed something that I don't own, and uh, you know it's worth having. I still get used to this stupid thing. Like I said, I added this. And then you see the reflux. You're still getting a reflux from the light over the light over here, no matter what I do anyway. So jihad, right? Let's take a gander at it. Uh, I want to spend, I want to say almost $40 when you add shipping and handling to it. The it has a bunch of older material, uh, older machines from other TROs, but they're newer models. And I went and looked at that, and made sure of it. And of course, you get your introduction with it. Then, but there's a lot of other material in here from that era that didn't make it in uh, to other TROs or came after the fact, and of course, wouldn't be in them. And if I imagine that uh, CGO has some of those those uh, recognition guides, which in some aspects are just what uh, shorter versions, PDF versions of uh, TROs. I, I get a little. A little vague. I'm a little confused on how those things work. I've seen them, but I uh, some were free. Some of them they want you to purchase, and when you, I, I can't just lay down money for every damn thing that they put they put out, no matter how much I would enjoy doing just that. Uh, that era of my life is long past, and so I have to be judiciously careful. Because the truth is, even though I've read, the, I, I sat and I read the majority of the material in here uh, before doing this review, and I probably will go back at some point and review th or re-read stuff in here again. This is just going to join another pile of TROs on my bookshelf, and I don't know if they'll ever see any practical use in a gaming environment. Uh, down the road. I can't say that it won't, but in part I bought it because I was curious, and in part I bought it because of uh, this channel. I wanted to get it on here, and I wanted to review it and share it. Uh, I've noticed that my TRO, uh, TROs tend to do some really good uh, uh, traction. They, they get a lot of hits, and uh, that's partial and partial for wanting to make the channel grow a little bit. So I, that's kind of what I'm looking at as well. And of course there's all these new designs and interesting stuff in here that for love I'm just baffled by the sheer amount of machines right you know the hitman it's actually showed up in earlier TROs but this is an updated version of it uh, there's some tweaking and changes between that original one and the one that's listed in here and that's just using that as an example uh, there's also a couple uh, machines that use internal combustion engines are modified from uh, Agra and Industrial Max as well and I'm not coming across it right off of that. It's ironic because when I first got the book and I opened it, the very first page I opened it to was to one of those machines and uh, I thought, yeah, this is worth having because that sort of stuff uh, exists from a number of errors and it was not common in 3025 even though it ought to have been if you look at the original stories of the, of the gray death legion and how grayson uh, got started and one of their earliest missions was was working with some partisans or some rebels on a planet uh helping them train their pilots to operate basically logger mechs and agri mechs that had been modified to carry machine guns and 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 uh, small uh, srms so the fact that uh, they were existing even in the fringes of Battletech in that era meant that they really should have been exploited just a hair a bit more. I, th I think that uh, fast to drop the ball there, they could have had a, a source book or on the concepts uh, behind modifying uh, these industrial machines. 
And because I can imagine that when you are lacking the actual resources to acquire mechs, then you have a planet with a load of these industrial machines that mimic mechs, that the temptation to make your own versions of them, uh, arming them, that is, and putting them in the field, uh, would be much greater than what uh, might, people might uh, think. And by not doing... Uh, it took a long time. I, I think it was FanPro that actually started producing some material that shows those machines. And of course, I'm not going to find it, am I? See, that was one of the transition things that I had issues with. Uh, when FASA bellied up in, tw in 2001 or so, and WizKids and FanPro uh, took up the, bought out the uh, franchise. I think it was WizKids that bought out the franchise, and then they suborned uh, part of the uh, uh, book, the rights for book material, source books to FanPro. And, and if if you know anything about uh, the history of behind the scenes of BattleTech, it is a convoluted hot mess of of who owns what rights and intellectual rights who can do what who needs the permission from whom to to progress with something and etc 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 and uh so i mean the the idea that uh Well, you know, I'm running off on a tangent, I guess, because I recently picked up yesterday, as, as early as yesterday, I got one of those Yet books that uh, I, it caught my eye, and I thought, Jesus, I, I got to have this book. And I was able to get a, it's a fan pro book called uh, Dawn of the Jihad, and it uh, uh, was only $20. In 1995, they had three copies, three used copies, and two brand new ones. And a uh, ten dollar difference, so I chose for cheaper one. Uh, generally speaking, most used copies are in fairly good shape. This one here, it's got little dog ears here and there, and back cover is bent slightly, but otherwise, it's no worse than most of the books on my shelf. So I mean, it, it's fine. But more importantly to me, it's helping to fill in that missing niche, uh, that sixty-five year time time shift that happened at, between FASA and FanPro. So it actually the opening two pages, two and a half pages, is an excerpt from the uh, uh, Randis, whatever his name is, uh, the one of the head guys for uh, FanPro who came over from FASA and explaining just how this stuff played out and what was going on at, at the time uh, behind the scenes. And I found that utterly fascinating and I'm looking at rereading it and I'm, I'm going to do a video on just that one subject because I think it's worth sharing for everybody to understand what they were thinking at the time and how convoluted and how crazy the era was at that transition between the end of FASA and the sudden abrupt end of it uh, and then the acquisition and the progress forward from uh, WizKids which was basically a whole different entity from FanPro. And for a, quite a while there, I actually thought they were just, FanPro was a subsidiary of WizKids, because I know WizKids was owned by Wizards of the Coast, who was then owned by, etc. You know, how that's how this stuff plays out. And so the fact that they had divergent lines was not something that I had really taken a whole lot of uh, interest in or was aware of. I had heard some rumors to that effect from other people who do know. And I tend to take some people's, wor at, uh, people's words at face value and some people's word at uh, cautionary value because it's just better off to go that route and so yeah of course the one mech I was I should have flagged the mech that I was looking for anyhow that book is a is uh, going to give me some great insights into an era uh, that actually on the table never never took place it's all done in the in the the history book and the source books and then the novels uh, in part because of the transition, the, the loss of FASA and the, in, the inclusive um, issues they had, uh, why they didn't continue in, in the, after, the obvious storylines that had been laid down for uh, the after the end of the FedCom Civil War. Uh, and yet they also talk about how that they did this, they did continue it, and how it had to take time to progress, and and why. So uh, WizKids automatically came in with the Dark Age concept and you know, the Republic of the Inner Sphere and all the stuff that went around that, this leap forward of 67 years or 65 years, and uh, 
that they, because they did that, they laid a lot of groundwork for what had happened in the jihad and how it came to an end, which then FanPro uh, was on the other side of the, the coin, so to speak, and they were given the rights to try to build up and fill in that space of those missing 65 years as best they could, and that's what this entry in this book talks about, and I think it's well worth investigating and looking into. Anyway, this is the jihad book, and there's a lot of great stuff in here, and uh I recommend buying it if you can get your hands on it. Uh, there's, they're still available. It's still fairly new. Uh, I imagine PDFs there too if you want to get them. They're probably a little cheaper than the hardback by any means. Uh, an excellent addition to uh, my collection, and I'm pleased that I actually got my money's worth of material for this. So, uh, like I said, I used to do an ending spiel, but I got that here. Going on, my friends. This is Rick, and hey, if you like the channel, please hit the subscribe button, uh, hit the like button, tell your buddies, tell your friends, tell your coworkers, tell anybody else that's in the gaming industry or gaming uh, fandom that says, hey, this is a channel worth checking out. Right? Till next time. I hope you guys have yourself. And of course, it comes to a dead end.